Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in for another video. Today I have a Sailor Moon tribute piece. I completed this quite a while ago, maybe about six weeks ago, and I don't think I've ever done fan art of Sailor Moon before, so it was something I was kind of really interested in taking on as a challenge. I wanted to move it away from the more traditional Japanese animation look into more of a classical Western illustration look. I don't know how to really um, categorize it, but basically I wanted it to look less anime, less cartoony, but more realism, but not quite full realism. And my favorite character in Sailor Moon was always Rini or Mini Moon, the little feisty girl with the pink hair. She was always my favorite. So I obviously wanted to incorporate her and I wanted to incorporate Sailor Moon and I explored a, a couple of different ideas, but for some reason I was really inspired by the piece called Mother by Klimt. And I thought it'd be really interesting and fun to do my own version with Sailor Moon and Rini, who, spoiler alert, if uh, my memory serves me correctly, hopefully I didn't get this wrong, Rini is Sailor Moon's daughter from the future. So I thought it'd be so fitting to try and take inspiration from Klimt's piece and do my own take on it with something as different as Sailor Moon. So after sketching around in my sketchbook, I did come up with about three different potential poses and I took each of them into Photoshop to flush them out a little bit more to help me make my decision. So here you'll see me flushing out the three different compositions on Photoshop. Typically when I come up with an idea for a painting, um, I usually do that in my sketchbook and these drawings are very crude usually and the figures can have wonky proportions. The elements are not in the place that I want them because I can't, you know, I can't just like nudge stuff around on paper. I'd have to erase and redraw, erase and redraw. So I usually do these types of drawings on paper and then I take them into Photoshop where I can flesh them out a lot better and it helps me see if there is actually potential in that idea. I really wanted to incorporate some of Klimt's aesthetic in my own piece with the clean lines and the striking shapes that he's creating with the gesture in his figures. I love how the woman's neck seems almost broken to create that straight line from her shoulder to her below the chin, I guess. And I love how the woman and the child just basically fits into a square. There are no negative shapes showing through in between their two figures. Their posing just makes it look so intimate and so tender. So that's an element of uh, Klimt's aesthetic that I really wanted to incorporate in my own piece. In my head, I was pretty set on one of the compositions, but I took all three into Photoshop and fleshed them out to a certain point um, to show you guys this is how I explore my ideas. Sometimes you know exactly what you want and you can see it very clearly in your head and you can also execute it very clearly. But sometimes you have maybe two or three other really good ideas that could also work that need exploring and comparing to hopefully make the decision of picking the final one easier. I knew that I wanted to go with my first choice, which was um, having Sailor Moon standing up and holding Rini. I like the composition the best. I like the way her hair frames the picture. And it does look more like an ode to Klimt's mother piece because it is more similar. I do really like the diagonal composition I had with the third piece. But ultimately, I did end up going with my first kind of gut instinct choice, which was the first one. And just for fun, let me know down below which composition was your favorite. So after picking the final comp, I did some quick color thumbnails to explore some different lighting and color schemes. In the first comp, I tried an uplighting scenario, which I'm sure I could have made it work, but it just kind of looked like a horror scene, especially because the colors I picked were so cool. 
So in the second one, I tried a backlit scenario and I basically picked the colors directly off this official Sailor Moon image and I, I really like the colors in it and it kind of instantly reminds me of Sailor Moon. By this point, I felt like, okay, I, I'm ready to paint. I think I know where I'm going. Let's do this. So I transferred the image to my painting surface and I began the painting by doing the background first because I really wanted to preserve the turquoise color and keep it as clean and as uncontaminated as possible because once you mix that turquoise color with any other color, it won't really look turquoise anymore. So I really wanted to keep that color as pure as possible. So I wanted to lay it down first and just leave it. And I try to paint the background with the wet on wet technique because I wanted all the different colors in the background to softly meld together instead of having distinct outlines between them. So what I did was I would just wet the area I wanted to paint in water, only water, and then take the turquoise color and drop it onto the wet paper and watch it kind of feather out into the water. And then I'll take a different color, maybe yellow, maybe um, green, and drop it into another very wet area of the paper. The background, as you can see, I just took straight from the original Sailor Moon. I love the bubbles, I love the sparkles, and the soft gradient of all the different colors. I think it looks super retro and very Sailor Moon. So I wanted to keep that aspect of the original aesthetic. So after laying in the first layer of the background, I moved on to painting the figures. This is how I approached painting the figures. I basically treated it as one big shape. So I started off painting the figures by laying down a warm wash of orangey yellow, hoping some of the warmth would come through the local colors that I would lay on top afterwards and hoping that it would also harmonize all the colors together. Then I laid down the local colors, which there are not that many in this piece. We just have some yellow hair, we have pink hair, pink in the ribbons, the wings, peach color for the skin. I wasn't sure what color I was going to do the butterfly, so I left that till the end. And the white of the dress, which was achieved by keeping it lighter in value than the skin, as well as cooler in color temperature than the skin. It was really tricky for me to paint white. I mean, I, I find it challenging to paint white to begin with, but because it's backlit and it has to be darker than the white light that's behind, it was tough to keep it from getting too dark, which would compete with their skin tone, which would make it not look very white. I'm constantly comparing values as I paint making sure that that certain color appears as it should under those lighting conditions. So that's one of the challenges that I ran into while painting this piece. And after laying down the local colors, I was ready to delve into the rendering. And I usually start out with the faces because if I mess up on the face, then I basically consider the picture ruined. So I'd rather know as soon as possible if the picture is going to be a fail. And oh boy, was rendering Rini's face really hard. I kept thinking that she looked like an adult, which is really weird because I draw very young looking um, subjects all the time. And for once where I actually have a scene where there is a, a distinct contrast between the adult and the child, I couldn't make the child look like a child. I don't know why, but she, I feel like she ended up looking a little more mature than I, I would have liked. I end up going back to her face often to fiddle with it. And in the end, I like how her face came out, but it was a struggle. <laughs> going back to the idea of keeping everything in one big group and therefore having to keep the values kind of close together, it eliminates having to do a ton of needless rendering, which I'm definitely guilty of doing in a lot of my paintings. 
So grouping can save you a lot of time because it doesn't need much to make it look finished. I spent most of my time rendering their faces and I didn't render anything else out nearly as much as I did the faces. So I would have to say this painting was pretty straightforward from start to finish. The last thing I did was the butterflies in the front and I kept them last because they are on top of everything. And also I wasn't entirely sure if I wanted to have them be darker than everything so that they are clearly in the front and in the foreground or if I wanted some of them to look as if they are emitting light, in which case they would be kept very light in value. Ultimately, I went with making them darker so that they would also have a clear silhouette against the background. So that's all I have to say about the painting process. It was actually pretty straightforward. I had a pretty clear plan going in, but despite all that, I don't know if I quite like how this piece turned out, unfortunately. I feel like the colors went awry on me in the end. Um, I think there are maybe too many competing strong colors. I have the turquoise, I have the bright pink, I have the yellows and the oranges. Maybe three is too many. Maybe the pink is a little too strong for um, the turquoise and the orange. Or maybe the turquoise is actually too bright. Maybe I, maybe I should have kept the entire thing a bit warmer and maybe the turquoise is throwing it off. I don't know, but I'm not thrilled with the colors in this piece. I mean, I really liked it at the time, but six weeks later looking at it, I don't know anymore. And it's really a shame because I made prints of it and now I don't even like the prints. I don't even like how they turned out. I can't bring myself to put them on my online store if I don't like them as much as my other prints. I definitely like the original painting a lot better. I think it looks so much better in real life than in photos or in video form. My iPhone 8, which is what I use to film for YouTube, it really boosts up the contrast a lot and it pushes up the darks um, way too much. I think what I'll do with these prints that I've made, I, I'm thinking of including a free one to every order that comes in until supplies last. That way anyone that actually wants a print of this basically gets two prints for the price of one. And that way I won't feel too guilty about putting a product on my store that I don't feel 100% um, confident in. It'll just be a nice little gift for the next 16 people that um, order from my store because I, I made 16 prints and I don't intend on making any more. So I'll let you guys know somehow, either on Instagram or Twitter or in the community tab on YouTube, when I've run out of them. So with that, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. I really don't want to end it on a sour note. You know, sometimes I don't, well, not sometimes, I a lot of times I don't end up liking my paintings. But I'm sure I've learned from this piece and my next ones will be better, hopefully. And I, yeah, I, I want to update you guys a little bit on where I am right now. I have moved. I am in my new office, in my new apartment, in the new city of Ottawa. It's exciting. It's very, very basic, very bare bones right now. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, furnishing and adding a little more surface area to this a room and uh, yeah, I'm I'm very happy. I'm in a good place and I'm really loving having all this time to myself alone in the house and my boyfriend is out at work and that makes me so very happy <laughs> that I have at least like eight hours to myself alone. It's a lot of time and it's such a big change from um, home. So yeah, I want to end it on a good note there. I'm looking forward to getting back into the rhythm of things. So hopefully that means I'll see you guys next week. Bye!